job well done. I think to endorse those sentiments is to say thank you very much to the winners. Very inspiring work. The next question is, how do we replicate? Without cloning you, of course. But how can we make the circle bigger? And that leads us to the next question of this very short panel for half an hour. But we need to just dip into the question of applicants. And how is it that we can increase the breadth and depth of applicants who feel eligible to apply for excellence awards? Who is it that feels I'm worthy enough to apply for a teaching excellence award? What's constraining those academics who are doing excellent work but can't complete a portfolio perhaps to the same extent and degree, etc., as others? So I want to invite a few people to inject some thought, critical thought, to help us to think through. We're not going to resolve anything, but at least we leave here with a set of questions that we can unpack in our own institutional context. Now, I was very pleased when I approached Dr. Karen Cattell today after listening to her very nuanced paper this morning on Teaching Excellence Award, a case study of Stellenbosch University, and I asked you to please give us a synopsis of, of the key points there to invigorate this discussion. I'd like to, at this point, call upon Dr. Alan Cliff, um, Professor Davies, um, Sia Sabata, um, Shiva Degatani, and uh, Ms. Sorry. Okay, so you can come to the front here, and then Karen, can I call you, uh, call upon you to just lead us through that discussion, and then we'll open it up for some quick, short, and poignant points. in which it happens at the moment, and also the possible context in which it could happen, but doesn't as yet. So I think for me there the, the nexus lies. Okay, So how can we move away from the ways we are doing Teaching Excellence Awards at the moment, and clearly not quite drawing in the people we need to, towards getting the pull for people to really come and show what they do. So, one of the <coughs> excellence, although it's one of the core values of higher education, is also a concept on which nobody agrees. Okay? Everybody understands something different under what excellence is. But it remains at the heart of contemporary debate still about what the university is for and what teaching should achieve. So, the best way in which one can actually understand the concept of teaching excellence, in my opinion at the moment, is that it's a really contested concept and something which is historically and situationally contingent. In other words, it changes all the time. It's difficult to grasp. Professor Barbara this morning spoke about the public good. He spoke about the neoliberal context in which universities function. He spoke about the new public management and the managerialist environment in which universities function at the moment. Now what that kind of environment holds in terms of teaching excellence is that when it comes 
to deciding who is excellent and who is not. Okay, and you can hear my discourse about it as well, which I really can't get away from either, is that the performance of individuals is really the measure of productivity and quality, and it's the measure of the value of those people, sadly enough. So, although, in terms of the white paper 2013, um, a key criterion for the transformation of higher education is that lecturers should decolonize pedagogy and curricula. It is actually not happening the way it should be. And why? That is because it's a tension on the one hand between social justice, between transformation, between de decolonization, and on the other hand then proving individual academic excellence in a decontextualized space. So what happens then is that decontextualized space is actually a private space. It's all about the individual. So teaching excellence becomes a concept that is for the private good, the good of the individual. It's for the good of the institution, but it is not for the public good. Okay? And it's in that link between society and between teaching in higher education, oh, heavens, okay, that we, uh, that we need to bring society in and change the way we think about excellence. We also need to change the way we think about values because excellence is regarded as a value, which, okay, personally I do not agree with, but all right, so if you say it is a value, it then opposes the values which are linked to social justice and the public good, and those are values like equality, equity, and social responsibility. So how can we change this situation then? In the first place, it's unlikely that we can change the uh, place of excellence as a teaching and institutional value, okay? Well, it's got to work inside your systems and that is something that is entrenched in the way universities work in this country. So I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm saying it is unlikely. It is also unlikely that we can turn around the corporatization of higher education. So when working again within that system then, we would need to work on recontextualizing those managerialist narratives about the concept and about teaching excellence awards and try and focus on <coughs> making it more inclusive and more collaborative. We need to work within the human, humanistic perspective uh, Prof. Bawa also talked about this morning because the values that dominate that perspective are equality, um, equity and inclusion, and that is where we need to go. So we can ask ourselves a couple of questions, trying, if I'm you know, trying to get practical about this now. When we had our panel for uh, the Stellenbosch University Teaching Excellence Awards a couple of weeks ago, one of the panel members asked the question, if our standards are not too high, because we also struggle to attract people to participate in these awards. And the suggestion was made, well, how about an award just for good lecturers? Why does this all need to be about excellence? Okay, that is, that is perhaps something we need, we can talk about. <coughs> we need to look at the concept of corrective justice. I think you mentioned that, okay? So it's not just about turning these awards into a more uh, a socially just way, it's also a corrective justice way. How are we going to do that in terms of awarding excellence? So we need to look at collaboration between stakeholders, between stakeholders and society. We need to look at including the student voice a lot more in what we do. We need to look more at interdisciplinary or disciplinary teams and projects, working towards collaborative goals, looking at the benefits of collaboration for overall improved learning and co-constructing professional growth. <coughs> and then lastly, we could look at criteria, uh, replacing criteria 
by domains, okay? Opening things up, looking at things like the construction of knowledge in the discipline of the candidates, how we can create an inclusive learning environment, fostering lifelong learning, etc. Okay, so I can go on a long time, as you can see, but I'm going to stop here because I've had the one minute sign now twice already. So thank you very much for this. Set up here. I thank you very much, um, Chair, and, and, and uh, good, good evening, uh, colleagues. I think it's quite interesting to, uh, to have been part of this uh, August uh, occasion, uh, and on behalf of the department, we really feel honoured, um, you know, to be you know, part of this important journey in terms of you know, growing capacity and recognising, you know, excellence uh, for our teachers and assistants. And importantly, I just want to indicate uh, that uh, as a department, the question of enhancing academics as university teachers really is at the heart of you know staff development project within the department's university capacity development project, which is a transformative program to address serious transformative imperative challenges uh, you know, that we are faced with as a system. And I think this platform, which is in, you know, really set to ensure that excellence in terms of teaching, men and women who are able to demonstrate you know, competence, excellence in terms of doing their work, are recognized. And that is very much at the heart of really developing our academics as teachers. So for that, I really want to you know, assure the system that as a signal of commitment from the side of the department in collaboration with the partners, I mean the partners, and particularly the CHE, as well as you know, all the participating universities, we are aiming at taking this process to another level. The processes are underway in making sure that we really up the scale in ensuring that we increase participation in this, uh, you know, awards, uh, you know, as a way to really ensure that people who are able to demonstrate excellence are recognized. And of course, supported in terms of taking forward the scholarly work uh, which, you know, will inform their teaching in the classroom. So with those words, I really want to, to thank you, uh, coordinators, and wish you know all you know the participants in this. And thank you very much. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, it's about creation of shared values. I think, for 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 me, or from the perspective of a, a CAG as a national agency with an interest in quality sure that um, there is there is not just access to education it's equitable access to education we see throughputs uh, improving we see all this is improving of course a an opportunity like this um, where we share innovative teaching and learning uh, to be more effective teachers and to ensure that there is efficiency um, it's critical that we we not only share as the 300 yesterday that I uh, gathered here, or those that will have an opportunity to read um, from the documentation that you make available to the institutions. For me, um, it's really crucial that these innovations are cascaded down to the classroom. And I think it's not, I don't have an, an answer to that. It's, it's more a question, how do we make sure that these innovative teaching uh, pedagogies are stayed down to the classroom where it matters? As, as, as institutions, we may have the best curriculum developers, um, the academic developers that would assist in putting together 
programs and <coughs> curricula and content, um, that is the best in the world. It doesn't end there. It actually, what happens in, what happens in the classroom between the teacher and the students, whether in the physical space or in the visual environment. You see, the interaction that happens where an emotional environment is created between. We talk, we are talking about motivation, making sure that the student, if it's intrinsic, the desire to learn because the emotional environment allows that it's sustained. And, and, and earlier on in one of the, the, the presentations, there was talk about um, sustaining motivation, making sure that the, 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 the students, and how they learn, the connections that are made in the brain are sustained throughout. If the motivation is extrinsic, it, it dies quickly. It's not sustainable. So how do we make sure that we keep the, the, the teachers who are there doing the interaction? And the interaction in the classroom is not just interactive, it's also iterative because it allows for one to be able to change as they go along. You can only do that if you understand what you're doing. So how do we make sure that everyone is able, or every teacher, it's, it's thousands, thousands and thousands of them in South Africa, how do we make sure that they have that kind of capacity to deliver more efficiently, more effectively, and we get the kind of graduates that we want, and the success, and the throughput space that we targets that we saw up in the beginning. Um, I think from the CHA, it's that kind of question, how do we take it to another level? Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I think a few thoughts. Um, can I say that if, 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 an, if an afternoon has demonstrated one thing very clear to us through the presentations, through the recipients of these awards, is that it is absolutely <coughs> possible to change the discourse about excellence in higher education. And that's what I think these recipients have helped us to begin to, to explore. A couple of thoughts, I think, just at the other, it's going to take, I think, a national, a regional, and a local perspective if we're going to create the enabling conditions to think about excellence and what excellence means. So I think that the national framework for the enhancement of teachers as academics which I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, know about already, is a great start. So thank you for that. But it's a start only. It's the it's one of those things which creates